You are looking live at New York Times Square, which, like the rest of the Big Apple, including its massive subway system, happily remains intact this Sunday night, that despite a threatened terrorist attack. Hello, everybody. I'm Harold Rivera, and stepped-up security remains in place on the very day federal officials feared the bombing assault on New York subways was scheduled to happen. Cops and reservists and National Guardsmen, many of them heavily armed, continue to conduct random searches of transit passengers, an intense activity that will last at least through tomorrow, Columbus Day, that according to the city's mayor, Michael Bloomberg. The authorities have focused on covering every train station, however small, but they have concentrated their forces on places like Penn Station, Grand Central Terminal, and Yankee Stadium, where tonight the Yanks are in a close one, hosting the LA Angels in a crucial playoff game. The suspected plot against the subways came to light from information gathered in Iraq, information that is said to have led to the arrests over there of at least two suspects. Despite those arrests, officials with Homeland Security believed that the information about an attack was unreliable. Still, the mayor and his police commissioner, Ray Kelly, say they have no regrets about heightening security. And while absolutely protecting a system of 500 miles of track, almost 500 stations, and 4.5 million daily passengers is nearly impossible. Authorities here were determined to do their best especially in light of the bloody attacks on the subway systems in London and Madrid. But again, so far, so good, happily. So here then, the rest of our final show on the number one television news network on the planet, Fox News. We thought it would be bad. It is horrible. With entire villages destroyed, high-rise buildings, including schools, collapsed, Roads, power, water supplies cut off. The death toll from the worst earthquake to hit Pakistan in modern times is expected to reach 30,000. And as America and the world mobilizes to help, we'll bring you the latest. Also tonight, just when you thought the New Orleans Police Department could not sink further into despair, comes this violent incident. The beating of a 64-year-old man and word that the three officers allegedly involved will be suspended and charged with assault. We'll be live from New Orleans at the latest. And as the family of one victim in Joe Duncan's Idaho massacre sues the Minnesota officials who let the convicted predator go free on low bail, we'll tell you the truth about the awful rumor that the monster videotaped the torture of nine-year-old Dylan Groney. And where on earth is the accused child killer Melvin Keeley? Three weeks after he allegedly murdered 13-year-old Caitlin Corda and two Indiana store clerks, the child's family is so terrified Keeling will return that they've turned to America's most wanted. And they've also invited celebrity bounty hunter Dwayne Dog Chapman to track Keeling down. Tonight, the dog's on the program live with the latest. And speaking of latest, here's a flash. Tonight's our last program. We're being transferred from the news channel to a broadcast station in your hometown. So stand by for some clips from memory lane. We're live and at large in New York City and around the world. This is a Fox News alert. The United States is deploying eight large military helicopters to Pakistan to help authorities there reach the tens of thousands of victims stranded in remote regions of the hard-hit country following that 7.7 magnitude earthquake. Their chief army spokesman is calling the worst disaster in his nation's history. Tens of thousands are dead or injured, hundreds of thousands homeless, and President Bush has told Pakistani President Musharraf that the United States wants to help in any way we can. Our pal Mike Tobin joins us now live on the video phone from Islamabad, Pakistan. Mike, what's going on? Hey. Well, let me tell you, the scene you have here is the Mergala Towers, and what is remarkable, the void space you see off of my left shoulders used to be an apartment building exactly like the one you see off of my right shoulder. It's as if it was a planned demolition. This building just pancaked down upon itself, trapping about 90 people inside. There's been a lot of heavy equipment uh, out here working, uh, big excavators, front end loaders, removing debris as quickly as possible with a number of goals in mind, including in those goals, uh, allowing the British emergency response team to get closer. This is the British team that has with them thermal imaging equipment, 
allowing them to sense if there is any body heat coming from inside of the rubble. Also, a sonic equipment allowing them to hear if there are any people trapped inside of the rubble. Some 28 survivors have thus far been pulled from the wreckage of this apartment building. 26 dead, 36 people are unaccounted for. The last cellular phone call that came from inside of the rubble came at 11 o'clock last night, about the last time they pulled a survivor from out of here. But this really is the tip of the iceberg. This is about all of the damage in Islamabad. The situation is much, much worse, about 60 miles northeast of here as the crow flies in an area called Mustafrabad. That is the epicenter. You've been out in the area, in the rural areas of Pakistan, uh, Geraldo, and you know most of the construction out here consists primarily of mud and cinder blocks in the event of something like a big 7.6 earthquake that stuff just comes tumbling down like marbles that is the area from which we're getting these reports of 20 and 30 thousand people dead uh, this is where we're getting reports of uh, towns like Balakot where there is said to be a school with uh, some 250 girls in it that just collapsed upon itself this is where we are hearing about the uh, Pakistani soldiers some 200 of them off on training missions or in bunkers killed when the earthquake struck uh, we're hearing uh, quotes from villagers saying that there is nowhere to stand for all of the bodies on the ground. Now, getting aid in there is next to impossible because if the quake struck, the roads were destroyed. Uh, it's frustrating the aid workers out here because a lot of the aid has come into Islamabad and they simply can't get it out to the areas that need it the most. We've got reports of the few convoys that attempted to get in uh, being attacked by starving villagers. So the U.S., as you mentioned in your introduction, has stepped up to the plate. Some four of the mighty Chinook helicopters as well as uh, three uh, Black Hawk helicopters will begin flying tomorrow as well as a couple of C-130 uh, Hercules fixed-wing aircraft and their aid is desperately needed. Geraldo? Mike, we'll, uh, we'll follow your coverage of the disaster. I know you do a great job, and let us know when you see those choppers in the, uh, in the air. Thank you. Thank you a lot, man. Now to New Orleans, where a full-blown criminal investigation is underway into the alleged beating by one cop of a 64-year-old man accused of public intoxication, and by another cop of a reporter for the Associated Press Television News who was covering the initial beating. With that and other stories from the deeply troubled Crescent City, Laura Engel joins us live. Laura. Hi, Geraldo. Three New Orleans police officers are heading to court this week after being with, suspended without pay tonight for this incident. Uh, as you mentioned, there is a criminal investigation going on after the whole thing was caught on tape. This happened last night on Bourbon Street in the French Quarter involving the arrest of a 64-year-old man who was allegedly drunk in public. Now, this criminal investigation is rolling. Top officials with the New Orleans Police Department are reviewing the tape caught by the camera crew with the Associated Press. A police spokesman says that they all have great concern tonight and are looking very carefully at this tape for excessive use of force. And we believe that the approach based on the preliminary review was not appropriate. It was not in, in, in line with the department policies and procedures. It was not in line with the department's training. So certainly that's a great concern for the police department. And those three officers did come in voluntarily for questioning this afternoon after four o'clock this afternoon. We understand they probably came forward after this tape uh, made it to everyone's air. Uh, again, suspended without pay, they could all lose their jobs. That's going to be the second part of what's going to happen. There's a criminal court proceeding happening on Tuesday. What makes that interesting is it's going to have to happen at the Amtrak train station here, Geraldo, because the jail and the courthouse are all damaged by the storm. So they'll go to the Amtrak station for that. That's the criminal portion. And then there will be an administrative hearing, and that's when they'll find out if they're going to lose their jobs over this. Laura, Laura, run that tape one more time, and, and, you know, it seems to me that the guy seems pretty calm when they initially are cuffing him, then the mounted officer kind of gets in the way of the camera, and the next thing you see is the cop <laughs> pounding the hell out of the guy. What happened? Right. Well, that's one of the main questions that those cops are being asked about tonight. We don't know what happened before and during this incident. And as you can see with that horse, uh, we can't see a portion of what went down with these officers and the man. Uh, again, everybody is looking at the tape. They're questioning these guys, and we'll have to wait and find out. And what's other, the other piece of information that is interesting is that there are two federal officers you see on that tape. Those two men are not considered participants in this scuffle. They are only considered witnesses at this point. Laura, thank you. Thank you very much. When we come back, uh, folks, we have that manhunt in Indiana, the update from the Grony case in Idaho, and a look at a church-produced anti-pornography film called Missionary Position. First, our first glimpse back.
I got Florida. She's, I'm holding her hand. She's a beautiful lady. I got her old, what's the dog's name? Dusty. Dusty, I got Dusty. We put her medicine in the bed. We're getting Florida out of here. She was here. She's all by herself. Uh, her, the street is flooded outside, but we bought a boat for her. We're going to take her uh, first class in our boat. We're going to go to the convention center. We're going to get her on a chopper and get her out of here. The captioning for this program is brought to you by... Don't think your smelly arthritis rub affects anyone's sleep? Try odor-free aspirin cream. It's long-lasting and clinically proven to relieve pain. Aspirin-free aspirin cream. Now everyone can sleep. Announcing the next generation of sensitive teeth treatment. Oragel Tooth Desensitizer. Only Oragel has the same treatment dentists use. Relieving sensitivity ten times faster than Sensodyne. Lasting a month. Oragel. Swab it on. Sensitivity gone. Erected in 1963, the walnut stands 15 feet high. I'll be in the car. Go where you want with Drive Free at Avis. Orca! Orca! Oh, I love Orca. I thought you loved the humpback. I recently changed my mind. But I thought we established that the Orca was my... Now run three times and get a free weekend on us. Find our lowest prices at avis.com. Sir, why are we meeting in the shower? Well, ideas always hit me in my shower at home, and our first store opens next week, so any ideas? FedEx Kinkos. For signs, banners, printing invitations, even shipping. Wow, this shower thing really does work. <laughs> <laughs> FedEx Kinkos. Make it, print it, pack it, ship it. They have passed this way before. The journeymen and women who make their meeting, who make their mark. We know them well and pay homage with Wi-Fi, with 24-hour markets, with ergonomic 360-degree swiveling desk chairs. We've learned from their legion and remade ourselves in their image. These are the fruits of your labor and joy. <laughs> Look in the face of the baby. This is it. This is it. No sugar coating, no political spin, no Republicans or Democrats. People suffering. Let them go. Let them out of here. Let them go. Let them walk over this right. damn interstate and let them out of here. Never forget the coverage uh, from Katrina, that, of course, outside the New Orleans Convention Center. Our friend and colleague Greta Van Susteren caught up with uh, President Bush 41 today as the former Prez toured the hurricane-ravaged regions in New Orleans and all along the Gulf Coast. Here's Greta. Gerardo, this is our third trip to New Orleans since the storm hit about six weeks ago. Earlier today, though, we took a trip with former President Bush, Bush President number 41, and we went down to Port Sulphur. We took a helicopter ride with him and looked at the devastation in that part of Louisiana, which is still partially underwater. You can see the structures destroyed by this horrible storm about six weeks ago. But here's a little bit of what President Bush 41 had to say. Can you ignore sort of, the, I mean, the, the criticism? I mean, every president no. gets you go. No, I can't ignore it. I don't like it. And I know it goes with the territory. And I got plenty of my share of it, including one hurricane down in South Florida. In Florida. But uh, when, you're, when your family is criticized, it's, it's far, I mean, this is personal, but it's far worse than when, when I used to be criticized. It's, uh, but he's strong, and he, he, this goes with the territory, and he knows that, and he never whines, he never complains. They can pile on all they want. He's going to do what he thinks is right. So that's a father talking, and a proud one at that. He, of course, was very impressed with the fact that there's so much spirit here wanting to fix this state and all the other Gulf states, Geraldo. But there's still, even though we see visually a lot of improvement, there is so much more to do because so many lives have been destroyed. So many that we've lost lives and buildings have been destroyed. But on the positive note, things are getting a little bit better here in at least Louisiana. 
Geraldo, and as a side, uh, on behalf of all my colleagues here at Fox News Channel, I just want to say we're going to miss you on Saturday and Sunday nights at uh, 10 p.m. Eastern, but I'm sure we'll see a lot of you uh, coming back to visit us, but good luck on your new venture, Geraldo. Greta, thanks so much. Thanks for those sentiments, and thanks for that report. In perhaps the worst of the Katrina aftermath stories, uh, more than uh, 2,300 children are still officially listed as missing by their families in the wake of the storm, although the Center for Missing and Exploited Children remains confident that most of these kids will eventually be found alive and be reunited with their families. The number, it's, it's shockingly high, isn't it? Uh, here to explain it is the, uh, the center's Ann Schofield, uh, joining us in, in D.C. So, Ann, w are there really 2,300 kids that are unaccounted for? We believe so, Geraldo. Since we established our emergency Katrina hotline on uh, September 1st, we received more than 30,000 calls for service uh, from frantic family members searching for loved ones, children as well as adults. We believe uh, from Louisiana, about 2,000 children. Uh, our cases have not yet been resolved. Mississippi, we've got a little less than 100. And from Alabama, about 25. As a result of Hurricane Rita, we had about 85 children reported missing, and to date, we still have about 50 well, still outstanding. And help me with this. Are you saying, are these kids dead? Are they among the 1,000 still unidentified corpses down there? Or have they been snatched? Uh, or they've been placed in a shelter and no one kept track of them? What, what happened? Our search continues daily, Geraldo. We have volunteers from our Project Alert and Team Adam program. These are retired uh, law enforcement officers who are searching daily diligently to assist us in helping to resolve these. We believe approximately four parameters may help to explain uh, these uh, missing children. Perhaps children who are with uh, parents and the reporting party, uh, an extended family member, simply has not gotten the information. A child may be with uh, an isolated um, care center such as Department of Public Social Services and the parents are yet unknown. Uh, also, children may be with caring adults, that is non-family members, who have not been able to contact the family to let them know that the child is okay. And of course, unfortunately, we may have to uh, face the reality that some children simply did not survive. You know, Ann, I, I, I've been around the block a few times, but this sounds to me like it should be on the front page of every newspaper in the country. 2,300 American kids are unaccounted for? I and mean, we're not talking about divorces here where the non-custodial parent snatches the kid and keeps it away from the one who has uh, court-approved custody. We're talking about kids that are unaccounted for. And, you know, wh what is this? This is, Chris is crazy. Well, Geraldo, the media has been absolutely essential in our effort to uh, contact and uh, reunite displaced families. Normally, our website, www.missingkids.com, receives about a million hits each day. Since Katrina and later Rita, we've received 10 to 20 million hits each day. That includes about 220 countries as well as the nation, just in inquiries and also reporting of missing children. Those photos are up on our website. We're asking the public's help to call and report any information that help, may help to resolve at our 1-800-THE-LOST uh, 24-hour uh, hotline. And thank you. Uh, any help that we can give, I'm, I'm sure that we've been trying, but I, it's just such a, we've got to, it's a priority. It has to be an urgent priority. Thank you very much for being with us. Thank you. With all the distractions and demands on the United States government, my next guest will be asking whether we're prepared for two coming challenges. One is the referendum in Iraq. The second is the possible outbreak of this bird flu that we've been hearing about. General Wesley Clark joins us after this. Service from BMW, the first car smart enough to call when you need service. BMW, the ultimate driving machine. What can an icebreaker teach us about maximizing shareholder value? 
need someone in the lead who can power through any obstacle. Corporate and Investment Banking, Wachovia Securities. Talk to us. You have a small business, and tomorrow you have a big meeting. You've written a great presentation, but now you need someone to put it together perfectly. Don't you worry about a thing. You need the UPS store. Professionals who can print, copy, collate, bind, and more. So while you worry about what tie looks good, let the UPS store worry about making your business look good. That's our thing. Don't you worry about a thing. The UPS store, the place for document services and a whole lot more. When you're a star like me, you just get treated differently. Key to the mini bar? Ooh. They miniature an entire bar just for me. Turn down service. Fantastic. Somehow they know I like to sleep between the sheets. Even my independent insurance agent spoils me. John, for you, the best policy is drive insurance from Progressive. I've compared a lot of them. You see, he treats me like the Sultan of um Papa Mau Mau. Actually, I do it for everyone. Of course you do. To find an agent who'll take care of you, go to driveinsurance.com. CNN weekdays, 3 to 6 p.m., the peak hours of breaking news. We're watching several stories, and they have specific and credible threats. You see it when we see it. Right now, there's an emergency meeting. These are pictures we're just getting in to CNN. Every afternoon. Out of the political battle brewing. We'll from outside the Senate from 3 to 6. Officially, the Pentagon is saying absolutely nothing. That's exactly why gas prices in this country are high. It all comes together in the Situation Room. CNN weekdays, 3 to 6 p.m. Eastern. It's essential. Lose fat, increase energy, reshape your body in record time with Fitness Made Simple's new 45-minute fat-burning workout. There are no tricky dance moves, no high-impact gyrations, just lightweight training done at a heart-pumping cardio pace to build lean muscle and burn pounds of fat. Work out at home with fitness celebrity John Basow doing exercises to sculpt your chest, back, shoulders, arms, legs, and abs. Call now or order online at fitnessmadesimple.com. Fitness Made Simple, bringing real results to real people. Go the other way, the other way. Turn around. Yeah, turn around. Roll, okay, roll. Did anyone hit? Oh my god. Ladies and gentlemen, we have just been attacked. We've just been sniped. We've been hit. Uh, protected by fate and our armor plating and our good luck. Our injuries were miraculously light. Our longtime driver and friend, 40-year-old Hussein Ali Farhan, in the lead car, had been hit from behind in his left shoulder. His right wrist possibly fractured. Hussein, who loves you, baby? Who loves you, Habibi? <laughs> Last year in uh, near Mosul, a sniper attacking our, uh, our convoy, one of the many indelible uh, uh, memories we have from the last, uh, last four years. Now, moving on to this, uh, this bird flu story first. You know, Europe got hit over this weekend with confirmation of its first two uh, cases of the deadly bird flu, one in Romania, the other in Turkey. So now there are confirmed cases in Europe for the first time. Some here at home are wondering whether our administration's plan for the possible outbreak in our country is adequate. General Wesley Clark joins us uh, from Little Rock. So, General, what, what do you think? First of all, I, I'm sure you're familiar with the administration's planned approach to dealing with uh, a possible pandemic, but uh, how, how do you feel about the, uh, you, you know, its viability? Well, Geraldo, the, this plan the administration has been working on for months and months and months has never actually been released to the public. It's being briefed in confidential sessions to key lawmakers and others, and it's still being worked. But in essence, this plan is going to put most of the responsibility on local authorities because this is where it has to be. It's the local doctors who have to diagnose the case and local people who have to set up the priorities for who's going to receive the limited amounts of vaccine or the antiviral medications that are going to be available. When you're dealing with something that's potentially this magnitude, the federal government's role is to assist in getting communities prepared, but the communities themselves have to take the lead. I hope that there won't be a shortage of the vaccine as there were, you know, some shortages in the past. Well, all indications are that there will be a shortage of the vaccine because right now where the avian flu is is that it's infecting people who are directly in contact with the fowl who are who have the disease but it hasn't shown yet the ability to be communicable between humans and so it's not infectious yet now it's anticipated that the virus will further mutate 
when it mutates, then that's the time where the vaccine that's been developed right now may have to be further modified. So gotcha. it'll always be a matter of sort of chasing after the virus. Catching up, catching right. up. General, uh, stick around. I, I want to go live now to Iraq, where the government there has announced a, a curfew, weapons ban, border closings, other measures to enhance security ahead of next week's key constitutional referendum. Our pal Steve Harrigan is in Baghdad. Steve. The U.S. military force is doing everything they can to level the playing field to make sure that terrorists will not interrupt voting scheduled for this Saturday. Another major offensive going on in the West, this time focused around the city of Ramadi. At least 500 U.S. forces involved, a similar number of Iraqi government forces also trying to drive out terrorists from Ramadi to make sure those people can vote for or against the proposed constitution this Saturday. Right now in Baghdad, Iraqi government officials doing everything they can to make sure that they get out to vote. A number of ads and banners, television advertisements, five million copies of the Constitution distributed across the country. There's 15 million registered voters in Iraq. It's clear that the Shiite majority as well as the Kurds will likely vote for the proposed Constitution. The big question still, how will the Sunni Arabs vote? They make up about 20% of the population. Many Sunni leaders telling their followers either to vote no or to boycott the voting entirely. But one thing that is certain, that is security will be extremely tight during the vote. Iraq has decided to close its borders except for emergency goods during three days around. The constitutional vote also uh, a ban on cars, and this could be crucially important. So no suicide car bombers can be out attempting to strike when Iraqis go to the polls on Saturday. Geraldo, back to you. Steve, stay, stay, uh, stay safe. Uh, General, I was there for the elections uh, earlier this year. I was very proud to be there. It was a really inspiring moment. Uh, then when we analyzed the results, we found that most Sunnis stayed home. Uh, do you fear they'll stay home this time, or will they vote? And if they do vote, will they vote down the Constitution? I think you'll get a mix in the Sunni population. I think a substantial number will vote this time. But there'll be some who don't. But I don't think they'll vote down the Constitution. They'll vote against it, but there won't be enough. They've got to have the majority, and the, they've got to carry three provinces, basically, and they can't do that. So they're not going to be able to vote down the Constitution. I think the most probable result is the elections will come off okay. I'm delighted to see the additional security measures that are in place. The Constitution will pass. It may have a couple more modifications put in tomorrow, but they won't be enough to ease the Sunnis' concerns. And the insurgency will be there. It will still be supported by large elements of the Sunni population, and it'll still be real trouble for us and for the Iraqi government. Trouble, I'm sure, lies ahead, General, but what do you think of the document itself? It gives a lot of power to the provinces. It decentralizes uh, what had been concentrated in Baghdad under the Sunni minority leadership of that country for many years under the Ba'athists. What do you think of it? Well, I think the document is going to pave the way for the Shiite majority to have the kind of power that they've wanted. I think the problem is that the way the process worked is the Sunnis weren't brought into the process soon enough with the right quality of representation to feel that they're involved and give it legitimacy. I think there's going to be deep factional division in this country, and regardless of the quality of the document, I don't think it's going to accomplish the, the strategic purpose, which is to delegitimate the resistance or the longer-term political purpose. I think it's, we're, it's just something we're going to have to work with, and hopefully we can continue to modify it. What I've been asking the government to do, our government to do, is to get with Iraq's neighbors and to try to set up some kind of a regional architecture of diplomacy in which the neighbors can reassure each of the groups inside Iraq and help them work together peacefully. But General, you don't expect them to help out shoulder to shoulder with us. Even, even our friends Kuwait and Jordan and Turkey, they're not going to send troops in. No, we don't need troops. What you need is the consultation. You need the advice, you need the business connections, you need the family connections. There are tribes that, that span all these borders. There are all kinds of connections in this region that, that we haven't officially dealt with. And we keep talking about this as a war, but it's a war, it's politics, it's diplomacy, it's, it's factional fighting between religious factions. There's all kinds of stuff mixed up in this. And we've got to put the military in its proper place. We've right. done, done a great job with it, but it's not sufficient. Long, hard row to, uh, to hoe right. ahead. General, thank you from Little Rock. Thank you, General Thanks Western. When we come back, folks, Melvin Keeling, he's the alleged killer of three, including the 13-year-old Indiana girl. You will hear 
from the fugitive's best friend. Also, we will hear from perhaps the fugitive's worst enemy, Dwayne Dog Chapman, will be live here in the studio right after this brief commercial interruption. We'll be right back after this. Enterprise rent a car for our trip? Yeah, they're everywhere. Even airports. See? Airports too. Hello, welcome to Enterprise. Let me help you with that. Wow, the friendly service of Enterprise is everywhere. Pick Enterprise. We'll pick you up. Now from Goya, how to make every authentic Latino rice dish in minutes. Just cook up any Goya rice mix. And only Goya brings you so many other ways that'll make you say, if it's Goya, it has to be good. Since I have type 2 diabetes, I try to do what my doctor says. But her blood sugar is still too high. I exercise whenever I can, but his numbers still won't come down. I try to watch what I eat. But her blood sugar is still not under control. Even though you diet, exercise, and take your medicine, managing type 2 diabetes can be hard. Adding Avandia can help. Avandia lowers blood sugar. It works differently than other diabetes medicines by helping your body use its own natural insulin better. And Avandia can help maintain blood sugar control. Avandia may cause fluid retention or swelling, which can make some heart problems worse or lead to heart failure. Avandia is not right for everyone. Talk to your doctor if you have heart failure or liver problems. Blood tests should be used to check for liver problems before starting and while taking Avandia. Avandia may cause weight gain. It may cause low blood sugar when taken with other diabetes medicines and may increase your risk of pregnancy. I got my blood sugar under control. You really did. Could adding Avandia help you? Have you made the O part of your life? At Overstock.com, you can find anything you need for everything you do. You'll save on home furnishings for every room in your house. Jewelry, books, videos, music, and more. With a low flat rate shipping fee and live customer service 24-7. Overstock.com also has the easiest to use auctions. And a travel department. Because everyone deserves a vacation. Make the O part of your life. Overstock.com. It's all about the O. <laughs> Here's the Chevy. They got the SOB, Brian. All right, here he goes, here he goes. All right. All right, they've got him. Uh, this is, we believe, Brian Nichols, the suspect, being sought by police officials over the last 24 hours, wearing a blue T-shirt with some kind of logo on the back, uh, in the custody, as you can see there, of FBI agents. Well, it's him. It's Brian Nichols. I'll tell you that much, Brian. That's, that's certain now. Uh, the takedown of the Atlanta courthouse shooter, Brian Nichols, earlier uh, this year in Atlanta, Georgia. Let's move on now to this, uh, this disturbing case uh, that uh, Dwayne Doak Chapman, who's with me here in the studio, has been working. It was less than two days after Indiana authorities opened an investigation into whether this fellow Melvin Keeling had sexually abused his own 13-year-old stepdaughter, that the man allegedly shot and killed the child's best friend, another 13-year-old named Katie Cordell. Apparently he shot Katie because he feared that she would testify against him in the molestation case. Keeling's also suspected in the murders of two Indiana store clerks. He's currently obviously a fugitive. Uh, and Dennis Cordell, uh, Katie's grandfather, fears he may come back to kill again. If he does resurface, though, we'll have to uh, face our pal Dwayne Dog Chapman, the celebrity bounty hunter who has vowed to bring Cordell to, uh, to justice. But, Grandpa, you first. Uh, uh, do you really feel that this guy could, uh, could come back to haunt you? It's very possible he could come back and try to try to hurt some of the other family members. Why, why do you feel that, Dennis? Well, if he don't care to kill women and, and children, uh, I wouldn't put anything past him, really. Do you want to tell us a, a little bit about your granddaughter? Tell us about Katie. Katie was the most sweetest kid on earth. And she loved life so much. And she cherished her friends. She always tried to do the the right thing. Did she ever tell you about uh, about this guy uh, abusing his stepdaughter? No, sir, she didn't. She didn't tell me that. But is it fairly, it is fairly certain, ladies and gentlemen, that was uh, part of his motivation in killing uh, killing uh, little Katie. Dwayne, what, what do you, first of all, Grandpa, what do you think about Dwayne Dog Chapman on this case? Any, well, anything it takes to catch him, it don't matter what it is, just get him off the street before he hurts someone else. I hear you. 
Doug, welcome. What are you doing again? Thank you, sir. <laughs> well, of course, I'm working leads. Leads means sources. Sources means people with information. So, you know, Melvin had a lot of friends, so I'm starting at his friends. I've developed a friendship with one of his friends, and I'm constantly getting information. So information like where he was the, la the last few minutes after he committed the first murder. What did he tell, for instance, his mother? You know, a lot of these guys, as you know, who all go to their mother or their wives. What was his last words? What's his plans in life? You know, so I've been working that and developing leads through that. What do you make of the fact that uh, in the woods they found his, uh, his license, I guess his wallet? He, it seems to be he's shedding his identity. Right. Well, there's two, two things to think about that. He was running to the railroad track, you know, threw his wallet, jumped on board to, you know, start a new life. And or he threw that there on purpose to, you know, set a decoy of something. The only investigation can prove, you know, which one of those is true. So uh, Pat Williamson of the Jasper County, Indiana uh, Police Force on the, uh, on the phone is a detective there uh, charged with investigating this case. So uh, what, what do you think about it, uh, Pat? What do you think of... Uh, First of all, of dog's involvement and your chances in, in nabbing this, uh, this Keeling. At Geraldo, uh, as far as dog's involvement, uh, anyone that's able to locate him, whether it's uh, through the media or, or a private investigator or whatnot, uh, we'd be happy to have him in custody. And uh, we just, uh, you know, we're looking forward to the day that we get the right lead. The uh, tips are coming in daily. And... Uh, we just, you know, sooner or later we will get the right lead on that and we'll place him in custody. You consider this guy armed and dangerous, Detective? Oh, yes, he's armed and dangerous. Uh, he shows uh, no regard for life, as uh, is shown with our two clerks in our uh, county. I, I, I just uh, interrupt you, Detective. What we're watching is uh, clips from uh, Dog's program, but now this is, this is Melvin Keeling. Uh, how old again is he, Detective? Uh, he's, in a, he's approximately 40 years of age. Uh, he's... Uh, uh, martial artist, uh, fifth degree black belt in kickboxing, we understand. Mark Furman joins us from uh, Spokane. Uh, he's on board to talk about uh, the Grony case a bit later, but Mark, uh, we'd be silly not to take advantage of your expertise. The guy kills a 13-year-old because you could testify against him. Uh, you know, in the, in the hierarchy of criminals, this seems like a, a real jerk. Well, he, he's not only that, Geraldo. <clears throat> what he is, is, is he's somebody that's going to take out anybody to stay free. He took out a witness, a little girl. He's going to kill any law enforcement officer and anybody that's uh, trying to get in, in, in his way to stay free. And, you know, I, I've been reading about this, and I think the dog is actually uh, absolutely correct. Uh, you, you don't know which he's trying to do, jump on a freight or he's laying it down there to have you think so. Um, you know, this is one of those things is you have to eliminate all the background contacts he's had. Where does his buddies, does he go hunting, fishing, uh, vacation homes in the summertime? Any of these places that would be vacant now need to be checked out. If we remember uh, Kunan, and, uh, he was hiding in a vacation home and had been for several days. Right so, that. yeah, sure. these are the things you need to check. All right. Uh the, uh, one of the friends, uh, Mark mentions one of Melvin Keeling's friends, one of them gave an interview to America's Most Wanted. We have a clip. Let's roll it. All of a sudden, I heard two big bangs. And I thought, what has she knocked over? And I walked down the hallway, and I looked in her room, and she was laying there, and there was blood all over. At around 10 a.m. on that morning, a person we've identified as Melvin Keeling steps into the store, stops briefly, looks up at a security camera. He then moves over to the counter quickly, lays his keys down, and the store clerk steps up to wait on it. As she steps up, he pulls a gun out from underneath his shirt, comes up, and immediately shoots her in the face. Unbeknownst to Melvin Keeling, there's a second clerk down doing work behind the counter. When he steps around, he shoots both ladies at least four times. Three murders in just four hours, and Keeling was still on the move. To many who knew him, it was inconceivable that Keeling could be a killer. The person that they're seeing is not the person that we know. Um, the person that did this, you know, heinous act is not the person that, that I love and that I grew up with. It's a different person completely. One of the things I mostly remember about him, this is the first time that I remember being in church, was we were we did the skit of the ten the ten leopards he was the leopard that had to come back to god and where all the other leopards left he was the one that came back to ask god for, to thank god for the fact of healing him i look at this now in the same sense 
you know, that he, he um, being um, very spiritual, having a heart for God, he walked away from the faith. But the fact is, I'm doing this because I want to make an appeal to him that, man, you can't continue to do this. It, uh, you, you can't continue to run. Doug, what do you want Keeling to do if he just saw that clip? Well, I want him to listen to his friend, but, you know, as Mark Furman and the other officer and the grandpa says, this guy is a guy that's not going to surrender. As you see my show on A&E, you know, that I can talk him into with the police and the family and get him to surrender because they got a heart. You know, there's something still good in him. In this guy? Uh, this guy's rotten to the core. I mean, this guy would murder a little girl while she's brushing her hair, shoot two other women. I mean, this, what you know, we can't even imagine that kind of stuff. How, how gross would we have to get ourselves to be able to do that? beyond uh, unbelief. This guy, I mean, you know, I'm all for the death sentence in these kind of cases, and I'd like him to take his own life. <laughs> Me too. 513-421-4310. 513-421-4310. The Cincinnati FBI office on the case of Melvin Keeling. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you, uh, Grandpa. Thank you, Pat Williamson. Uh, Mark, please stick around, because when we come back, an update on the Grim Groney case out of Idaho after this. What if the air were clean again? Would the grass be greener? Would you live longer? Feel better? What if all cars released 80% fewer smog-forming emissions? Hybrid Synergy Drive from Toyota. The power to move forward. You torched your car. Why? Practicing for hell. On October 21st. Pleased to meet you. What's the matter, Henry? What if one man's nightmare... That's my father. You told me your father was dead. But he is dead. The next time walking out the door. ...became another man's reality. I spoke to him more than less than an hour ago. He's been dead for months. From the director of Monster's Ball, Ewan McGregor, Naomi Watts, Ryan Gosling. Henry! I wish you didn't have to see this. Stay. Rated R. October 21st, only in theaters. Look what I've got. What's this? My osteoporosis medication. Oh, the one you only need to take once a month. That's the one. It's Boniva, a once-monthly prescription treatment for postmenopausal osteoporosis, clinically proven to build and maintain bone density. Will this doable? Oh, I can do that. Yeah. Oh, Where'd you get goodness. this? My doctor prescribed it. Are you kidding? And unlike treatments you take every week, you only need Boniva once a month. Oh, aren't we in the know? I have my moment. <laughs> okay, lay some up, ladies. Okay. You should not take Boniva if you have low blood calcium, severe kidney disease, or cannot sit or stand for at least 60 minutes. Follow dosing instructions carefully. Stop taking Boniva and tell your doctor if you experience difficult or painful swallowing, chest pain, or severe or continuing heartburn, as these may be signs of serious upper digestion problems. You do the right thing to treat your osteoporosis. To build and maintain strong, healthy bones, ask your doctor about once monthly Boniva. There's only one. Their mission, kill at any cost. Their orders don't come back alive. Kamikaze pilots, they rain terror from the sky, killing at will and striking without warning. Was it hate, honor, or something more sinister? We expose the real story and how America fought back and won. Join us for a special War Stories with Oliver North. Fox News Channel's acclaimed series, War Stories with Oliver North, is now available on videotape. Call now, 1-800-933-0760. Yeah, I realize I'm, I'm going to be suspect. There's, there's going to be that aspect to this thing till it is solved. How did your interview with the FBI agent end today? Um, well, he was pretty adamant that I knew some about the whereabouts of Shasta and Dylan, and I told him, you're wrong. You are so wrong. Um, finally, I just said, look, am I, arrest am I under arrest right now? And he said, no, you're not. And I said, well, it's pretty apparent I'm not going to convince you that I don't know anything, and you're not going to convince me that I do know something. Steve Brony, the father of Dylan and Shasta, in the early days of the investigation when the FBI was flailing around and uh, pointing the finger of suspicion even at the dad, uh, who is obviously 100% obvi uh, innocent. Uh, he's a guy who's become our friend, uh, really he's like a brother to me. I, I love him. He's such a loving dad now, taking care to heal uh, his remaining child, Shasta. Uh, he has also a, another older son. 
Uh, but with the federal trial of, of Joseph Duncan, the real perpetrator, scheduled to begin on January 17th, there have been some developments in the case of this convicted predator accused of the torture and kidnapping of nine-year-old Dylan and eight-year-old Shasta Groney, and certain soon also to be charged in state court with Dylan's terrible murder, uh, Brenda, Dylan's mother, her murder, Mark McKenzie, uh, Brenda's uh, uh, fiance, her murder, and Slade Groney, the teenage brother of, uh, of Dylan. Uh, First of all, there has been a claim filed, as you've heard, by the family of the adult male, Mark McKenzie, who was allegedly murdered by Duncan during that initial massacre that ended with the kidnapping of the children. The brother of uh, Brenda Groney's boyfriend, Mark McKenzie, has filed suit against the Minnesota officials who released Duncan on that ridiculously low bail, just 15 grand, following the convicted predator's arrest on two other unrelated counts of child molestation. Uh, Steve has nothing to do with that lawsuit. That lawsuit was filed by the relatives of Mark McKenzie. Secondly, the stories circulating mostly on the Internet alleging that, uh, that Joe Duncan videotaped his torture of the groany children are only partially true. According to Steve, uh, who, who knows everything, uh, Duncan did digitally record his torture. If you can imagine the horror of this, of the nine-year-old boy in the woods where he took them, uh, uh, Dylan and Chasta. But eight-year-old Shasta does not appear in these horrifying pictures. She's not involved in this at all. The, uh, the images were recovered from Duncan's computer, despite the fact uh, that they were deleted by the savage creep who allegedly committed the monstrous offenses. Joining us now with more on this, uh, this troubling, haunting case, Dave Turner of the Coeur d'Alene Press and Mark Furman, uh, who remains with us. So, Dave, that's my info. You want to uh, tell us what you know? Well, it's, uh, it's uh, uh, waiting to see uh, these tapes if they ever come out, and eventually they will come out, but it'll be a while. Uh, but apparently it's uh, probably wait until the federal case, which will be way after the state case, which starts in January. And that's when they'll bring uh, the charges uh, related to uh, Dylan and Shasta in Montana. Uh, and, and Mark, uh, which state would you figure would have, you know, be next in line after the feds? Well, you've got Idaho that's got, uh, you know, three homicides, and then you have Montana that's got at least one homicide in rape, and then you have the feds for the kidnapping. So I think Montana is probably going to defer and kind of blend in their charges with the feds. It just makes sense. Um, it's going to be to the same end, and uh, I, I think this is going to be uh, more of a surprise than it is uh, um, a mystery. Or, excuse me, it's going to be more of a surprise at the end. I think there's so much that we're not going to know until that very day when they present it in court. You, you we're watching you when you went to the campsite, the remote campsite for us, and discovered uh, where he perpetrated that awful, uh, the awful torture of those, of those children. It'll all end up with him uh, on death row someplace, but what you're saying, Mark, is we don't know how many crimes he actually committed of others we don't know about. Well, you've, you've got a, a serial killer here is what you have, a man that spanned probably five, six, seven states when he was basically on the lam. He violated his probation and took off. He violated his probation and took off the second time. Both times we have homicides right. that he was attached to, uh, connected to through forensic evidence. So how many do we not know of exactly. that he didn't leave forensic evidence? And I'd probably say there's probably, you know, 10, a yeah. dozen, 15, yeah. 20. I'm, I'm with you on that one. Dave Turner, thank you. Mark Permit, thank you also. Thanks. Coming up, a wacky story on an anti-pornography group that has a new documentary. I won't share the title of it, but I'll tell you coming up after this. We're always live. This program is brought to you by Verizon Wireless. We never stop working for you. Lots of Wi-Fi users work in coffee shops, which aren't always the best places to work. Wouldn't it be great to work wherever you wanted instead of only in hotspots? Now you can with Verizon Wireless Broadband Access. Wi-Fi only works in limited locations, while Broadband Access is the nation's largest high-speed wireless broadband network and is expanding coast to coast. Now get unlimited access at a great price. So you won't get stuck in a not-so-hot spot. Verizon Wireless, we never stop working for you. Introducing the new 2006 Cadillac DTX. With the North Star V8 and the world's fastest reacting suspension system, you are in control.
Cadillac DTS. Cadillac. Breakthrough. This is their world. With 31 points of view you've never heard. Past 31 borders you've never crossed. And 31 histories you need to know. That's 31 ways to see it through their eyes. Experience the world beyond our borders. 31 shows, 31 nights. Now is the time to globalize yourself. All this month, only on History International. Call your satellite provider. Right now, Dish Network has 50 good reasons for you to add HBO and Showtime. $50 back. Order HBO and get eight channels of hit Hollywood movies and HBO's award-winning series. Order Showtime Unlimited and get ten channels of hot movies and cutting-edge originals. Order them together and you can get $50 back. HBO, Showtime, and $50 in your pocket. Now that's a deal. Go online or call 1-888-DISH-109 and get it all only from Dish Network. Let's compare. If this is other car insurance companies, and this is Allstate, and if they both cost about the same, which would you feel safer with? You're in good company. Last year, over a million people switched their car insurance to Allstate. Surprised? For many people, Allstate actually costs less than those companies that only talk about how much you can save. Allstate's been helping drivers for over 70 years. You can look to their knowledge and experience for help 24-7. You get more than an 800 number. You get real people with answers. Why get car insurance from a company you're not sure about when you can get peace of mind from Allstate? It's a good feeling if the going gets rough. Call 1-866-532-3900 and find out how much Allstate's knowledge and experience can help you save. You don't have to wait for your current policy to expire. Switch to Allstate and start saving right now. Quality car insurance should be affordable. That's Allstate, Stan. Are you in good hands? Two and a half weeks. Two and a half weeks. Twenty-two thousand. Twenty-two thousand in my pocket. Wow. That's not what I split with the house. That is mine. Wow. And you folks know what you do, and the family. My knows? parents are deceased. Uh huh. So I have a brother, and he knows what I do. Uh, he's not that happy about it, but he knows a lot of people that a lot of girls that are doing the same thing I'm doing for free. So <laughs> he basically feels if I'm going to be sexually active, I'm single. I might as well uh, do it uh, this way. I can't believe that the Bunny Ranch makes our greatest hits real, <laughs> embarrassingly. But I guess it's in leading into this segment. Uh, uh, my next guests are young church pastors who founded XXXChurch.com, XXXChurch.com, which is an anti-porn, pro-Christian website. Uh, all participants to their, uh, uh, to their seminar view their documentary, which is entitled, get this, Missionary Positions, which is not about those kinds of positions at all, but it's rather about, you know, anti-pornography, I guess. Anyway, Mike Foster, Craig Gross, join us from, uh, from Chicago. So, w first of all, mission what is the missionary position that you, you know, so boldly title your documentary? Well, Mike and I are missionaries to the porn industry, really, and this film documents our last three years of, of our journey uh, fighting the world of porn. And tonight it was shown at, uh, at 70 churches around the country. We just left Willow Creek Church here in Chicago as part of a national campaign called National Porn Sunday. Do we have a, a clip? If we do, you can, uh, you can run it. I'll talk uh, to, to Mike now. Mike, how'd you choose this as your calling? Well, it, actually, the, it called us. I was in the shower one day, and I was praying to God, and God spoke to me and said the word porn and that we need to address this. I called up Craig had lunch, and the rest is history, I guess, Geraldo. And what, and what do you really hope to accomplish with this, Craig? Well, we have kind of two missions. One is towards the porn industry, and we really don't, uh, I mean, we're not here to shut it down. We're here to create solutions amongst the people in, in the porn industry. And our second... Solutions to what? Uh, to this problem. A lot of people uh, shooting porn these days aren't in, in favor of even how far their industry has gone as far as hardcore material mm -hmm. and just the, the fantasy world of porn and the problems amongst the industry. So we're here to make some solutions in, um, in their world and also are uh, taking this message to the church and getting the church to talk about America's dirty little secret. Okay, Craig Gross and Mike Forster, thank you very much. The website, xxxchurch.com, an anti-porn porn website. Final thoughts on the last four years after this brief message. Have a good day. See you tonight. Okay.
Introducing the all-new Suzuki Grand Vitara. You want more out of life? We're giving you the green light. Go! Between my two phone bills, it's probably about $60 a month. About $150. Probably $100 bucks a month. With Vonage, you get unlimited calls to anywhere in the U.S. and Canada, and all the cool features you could ever want are included. And it's just $24.99 a month. Call 1-800-972-4VON and get your first month free. This offer is also available online and at these fine retailers. Vonage, the number one internet phone service. I love football and Dish Network, and now they have NFL Network. I love the interviews, stats, inside information, everything NFL. In fact, I'm so full of love, I asked them to send me someone to hug. I was kind of hoping for a cheerleader. Get Dish Network Satellite TV today, and NFL Network can be your daily source for NFL news, insightful player and coach interviews, pre- and post-game analysis, and up-to-the-minute stats for your fantasy football league. Call right now, and you can get over 120 channels, including local channels and NFL Network, free for the first 30 days. Plus, get HBO, Showtime, and Cinemax free for three months. And as a special bonus, Dish Network will throw in a free DVR equipment upgrade. So sign up for America's Top 120 now and get over 120 channels free for the first 30 days, including the only 24-hour network devoted entirely to the NFL. More football for less. Dish Network, better TV for all. Come here, you big palooka. Their mission, kill at any cost. Their orders don't come back alive. Kamikaze pilots, they rain terror from the sky, killing at will and striking without warning. Was it hate, honor, or something more sinister? We expose the real story and how America fought back and won. Join us for a special War Stories with Oliver North. Fox News Channel's acclaimed series, War Stories with Oliver North, is now available on videotape. Call now, 1-800-933-0760. People come at celebrity, we're targets. And, uh, but the truth always prevails. Joining us now, Geraldo Rivera. You said today, if he's found guilty, you'll what? I, I said shave my mustache. I was, I was speaking metaphorically. <laughs> you know, you didn't really mean it, huh? <laughs> well, I don't believe he's going to be convicted. I don't think there is a chance that they can convict him beyond a reasonable doubt of these charges. Just, well, I guess I'll be keeping my mustache there, Sean. Uh, we had a little bet. <laughs> <laughs> well, you said if he was found... Not guilty. Not guilty. On, all, on all counts. If he was found no, guilty, if, if gonna, he was found guilty I was going to shave off my iconic mustache that I've had for almost 40 years. And what was I going to do? I, I you you were going to give $1,000 to the charity of my choice, Wounded Vets. And what vets. is it? Wounded Vets. All right, Doug. Okay, okay, wounded Vets, friends, you owe him $1,000. Uh, you... <laughs> it's still here. So tonight's the last episode of this show on the news channel, at least for now. Beginning October 31st, Geraldo at Large, as it will be called, goes on the air on the broadcast side of the Fox family. While we're all excited about the chance to reach an even broader audience, it is a bittersweet time for the team and me because we love being on the Fox News Network. Proud to be part of the absolutely best news team ever assembled on television. For the last four years following 9-11, Brother Craig, Greg Hart, and I have been among the warrior journalists as our country counterattacked the terrorist enemy. And of all we've managed to accomplish out there, aside from surviving, our most important work has been focusing attention on the incredible dedication, courage, and sacrifice of our men and women in uniform, forging relationships with GIs in the process that will last lifetimes. Closer to home, we've done our best to chronicle and comment on our nation's challenges, comfort her victims, whether from crime or storm, and to encourage those dedicated to helping others, especially the volunteers and the first responders. And while rejecting the ideological and party politics that too often divide our nation these days, we've tried to infuse everything our team has done, home and abroad, with a sense of good old-fashioned patriotism, an unembarrassed, undisguised desire to see America prevail over her challenges and her enemies. Because however imperfect, this is the fairest, most inclusive, best nation on earth, and I want her to win. So it's not goodbye, ladies and gentlemen. You are the audience that has made us number one weekend cable news program on TV. Hopefully you'll stay with us. Remember, we go on the air October 31st. That's Halloween. That's supposed to be good luck. At least that's what my children tell me. Just check your local listings for time and station. In the meantime, thank you very much for watching. Uh, have a great weekend. Before I give you my kiss, here's my, uh, my bro.
have been with me, Greg Hart, been with me all the way, Craig and Greg, the rest of our team, Dave, Annie, Jen. Come on, Rusty, come on, run over here, too. Thank you, thank you so much. Thank you for everything. Christina Timothy is up in the, uh, in the uh, control room. Thank you. Thanks for watching. Thanks for making the show such a big success. Have a great week. Good night, not goodbye.